Just text Deck from Ant and Deck, right? I don't know if he's going to come on. Why have you told everyone? You should have just left him. Well, no, because if Deck's listening, he's thinking I might not. Now he's thinking I might have to. All right? He's come on before for me. So if Deck comes on, how great will that be? Unbelievable. Who have you phoned? What big heads have you got? Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a of oh, I'm going to go to the lines in a minute. I know Newcastle fans want to have their say. I'll do my best to get through as many as I can. So Newcastle United fans, you have to phone me. 08717 January is the okay. next time they big. can buy. You've got to go big. Give me a name. You, you start You start looking at kind of fringe players that maybe yeah. might be available. Even someone like a Sterling. But as I said, the whole situation with Kane... You can't see Harry Kane going yeah, to Newcastle. I can't Newcastle. see it, but you, you said it yourself earlier. If they throw enough money at him. If they throw it, listen, life's all about money, right? Mm. I, I know you're. With Harry Kane, he's not got Champions League football now. No. So that's a great call. But if they offer Spurs £200 million and say, Harry Kane will give you a million pounds a week, it's done. Is it not? I don't think they'll do that. Why? I, I, They've got I, too much John, money. I think what they need to do, I don't think they, they'll sign one big one, like Royal Big one, Yeah. But they need a few others. Can't they do two or three in the window? I think they can go two or three. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Van Dyke's going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> Salah. Ronaldo's going to But they could do all that. They've got that much yeah, money. They I don't could. think they'll do that. But there certainly needs to be one big one and then a few others. What about, them what, a serious, what about someone like Donny van der Beek? Can he go there? Would he improve? Yeah, his... listen, he's a good player. I think he'd improve yeah. what, he'd better yeah. what they got. That kind of player that can't get into the big team. I think we can have people like Ndidi. You think Kasuma? so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, 087 uh, You can come on National Radio and have your say. Let's speak to Chris as a Newcastle fan. Hello, Chris. I'm rich. Rich beyond me wild. <laughs> uh, I won't ask oh, how you're feeling. I, did, I had some stuff planned to say. Yeah, I didn't know what it is now. Like, But, oh, buzzing. We're back. Chris, Chris, how long have you supported Newcastle for? Uh, I'm 39. Uh, my uncle took us to my first game when I was nine. Got beat three-one off Bristol City. Uh, yesterday, so when we while. yesterday when we found out the ban was going to be lifted, did you in your wildest dreams think the takeover could happen in roughly 24 hours? <sighs> nah, nah. we just we've been here so many times mm. as Newcastle fans, and honestly, over the last sort of six months to a year, I've just given up all hope. Uh, it was a depressing Saturday morning would come and it was this feeling of dread and just, just nothing, not wanting to put much of the day on, not being able to put the raid. It's all gone. You know, that, that Cockney has come up here and he's just destroyed the club. First thing I want done, you've asked a lot of people, first thing they want, I want that Sports Direct, all that cladding, all over a beautiful stadium, removed and a bonfire outside. Well, you know what? You know, At you least know, you're not bitter, you know, Chris. Do you, know, do you know Chris as well? I mean, listen, I, I lived up there. Yeah, I lived up there I'm for 18 months. Funny, I, I'm joking, Chris. I know he's destroyed your club. I'm just messing uh, with you. I apologise. Uh, what well, I would say, Chris, Chris, certainly, uh, listen, I've lived up there. I lived up there for 18 months. But when the team's doing well, there's something about that city that it, uh, it, it comes it's, alive. So it's like a religion up there. It is like a religion. Yeah. Everybody wants to talk football. So yeah. you, you look about it now in terms of the takeover and how exciting it is. I mean, it's going to... It's, so, it's so exciting. Do you know, it, it pains me to say, I mean, I'm a Manchester United fan, obviously, right? And of course, another club coming in with more money means it's going to be even more difficult for my club and your club and all the other clubs. But we're struggling, but, we are. But even I'm quite excited just to see what they do. Just to see how much money they're going to throw at players. It's, Listen, there are there are mercenaries out there in terms of I've got of no players. problem with that at all. No, neither have I. That will go... I don't really care if they look at Champions League football. If they're willing to pay me £300,000 a week upwards... Yeah. I'm going there. Oh, mate, listen, I've said it many a time. If Magic FM want to double my wages, I'm playing Rick Astley till four o'clock in the morning. I've got no problem with that. <laughs> uh, Andy's a Newcastle fan. Hello, Andy. How are we doing? I'm, oh, I'm okay. How on? Can you put into words how you're feeling at the moment? Overwhelmed, uh, emotional. Uh, everything's gone through my head today. He is the lot. It's so joyful. It's, it's magical. Everyone goes in here. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's one of them. You know. I mean, listen. You're gonna, the shopping list is going to go. Is going to be crazy. You're going to get people that are going to be talking about Mbappe, which is obviously not realistic. You're going to get. Who would you like to see if you had the choice come in? First of all, a decent manager. Um, I want to see Bobby Robson's prodigy. I'd love to see the chosen one managing Newcastle United. You know? I would love to see Mourinho take us to great places. You know that that is that's that's for me. You know what I mean? Uh, Bobby Robson loved him, and I just think he'd do great there. Like you know. Your your next game, um, so we've got some time now. Where are we today? We are the seventh. So your next game is in 10 days against your home to Spurs. In that time, I mean, you just talked about Jose. Antonio Conte is, of course, available. Is it possible for that game at home to Spurs that you could have a different manager in Conte, the dugout? Conte could be there. And Anything's possible in football. Uh, anything's possible. But, like, realistically, we have to start from the ground up, 
rebuild, readjust and uh, move forward. Obviously get a couple of decent signings in January um, and hopefully within what, maybe three or five years, get a trophy. That's, that's all we want. We want we want the club with passion and what we've got back, like, you know what I mean? And this is, this is where we go. Like, it's a long know. time, five years with that. I, th- I think a lot of Newcastle fans w- would like to see it in three years. Well, imagine the City took four. Yeah, yeah, but that's for the title. You have to talk realism. Being a realistic person, you Maybe. know what I mean. You have to talk realism. We have to. You, you, you do it from the ground up, over. Yeah, from the training ground up to the stadium. You know what I mean. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what Andy? Right, you, you're right. You have you have got to do it the right way in terms of from the ground up. But when you're talking about this much money in terms of three hundred billion. You can cut corners. Do you know what I mean? Like, of course, you've got to do the, invest in the academy. That's for me. That's probably the most crucial thing in any football club is, is the academy. But when you've, you need you, to attract people there first, don't you? But, but for, listen, three hundred billion, you can attract anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe when you say three hundred billion, and it just doesn't seem real, does it? I think I read something earlier. If you, you add all the ten richest clubs in the world together, they're still not as rich as what Newcastle United are now. No, 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 Andy, say it again. What we are now. <laughs> yeah, well, what we are now. Yeah, you know, uh, I've supported Newcastle for forty years. I was born into a Newcastle family. I've got some Mackham cousins. You know what I mean? Mm. Unlucky for them, it's, it's, I'm buzzing for us. Like you know, it's um, it's, it's just one of those days. Uh, you can't you can't expect. I'm opening a can up tonight. I don't drink. I'm teetotal. I'm getting home from work and I'm having a can. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, well, be careful, Andy. Right, be careful. Honestly, uh, it's so exciting. It is mad, isn't I'm a, it? I'm not a Newcastle fan. No, no more. Obviously, I can't wait for the speculation to start about tomorrow. Do you know tomorrow it's going to be? It's going to be Harry Kane, player. Contact, yeah, Sterling, this person, that person. Yeah, honestly, it is. But, but, there, but there's, there's no a, reason why they can't get three or four in January. But, and there's a genuine crazy, chance yeah. that they can do that. Yeah, of course it is. Because yeah. three hundred billion, you buy whoever you want. What about, it, what about someone like Pogba? Would he go there? No, no. I don't know. Do you think the players are playing Champions League football now will continue to play it? The, it, it depends. Like, as I said, there are mercenaries. There's going to be players playing in the Champions League now that if someone was to say to them, all right, yeah, you're on 250, here's 500, mm. they're going to leave their club and go to Newcastle. Impossible for them to get Haaland. Yeah, I think Haaland wants Champions League football. Do you? Even yeah. if even if his money is obscene, yeah. two million a week. Yeah, I think what's Champions League. Because you've got to think, Newcastle are still, away, <laughs> are still miles behind. I know, but if you, get someone like, if you get someone like that, that is a goal pig, that's half the problem, isn't it? No, because you've got, you've got to get people to get him the ball. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Liam is a Newcastle fan. Hi, Liam. How are you? Oh, absolutely buzzing, gentlemen. Thank you for having us on this afternoon. Uh, words cannot put into context how happy I am. Um, I put talk sport on this morning at 7 o'clock and I've been sat on the edge of my chair at work all day waiting for this news. So absolutely buzzing is what we are now like. <laughs> Oh, the laugh at the end was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking, we're talking about shopping list. Isn't Salah out of contract at the end of the season? Yeah, Maybe we said that. Uh, so Zimbabwe. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> so well, there you go. There's, there's two just to get us started in January. <laughs> are, that, are those the type of names genuinely you're thinking could actually arrive at your club in the no, new year? No, 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 no. Of course not. Like you say, I think like what a lot of other people have been on and said you've got to build, um, you've got to build from the manager, the academy, and um, put money in the stadium. But hey, after today we can dream, can't we? <laughs> what about a new manager before that Spurs game on the seventeenth? Well, why not? I mean, me personally, I thought they would have maybe kept Bruce um, until they got people in and sort of done the homework. Because unless they knew previously that this was going to be happening and they were already looking at managers, it's pretty short term. But then again, I suppose these people, if they want to go out and get a a Conte or whoever, um, they'll go and do it, won't they? Mm. Well, Con- Conti is there, isn't he? Liam, thanks for that. that that's the thing. Conti yeah. is right there. I do feel a bit uneasy talking about he's sacking Steve Bruce. Well, listen, I, listen I've, I've worked under Steve. Yeah. I've had really good times with him. Um, but unfortunately, Newcastle fans, it's not us saying I know, Newcastle, I know, I've, I know. I've tried to defend him on numerous occasions in terms yeah. of what he's got to work with down there, what do they expect, and you get absolute pelts from, the, from Newcastle fans. I know you fans do, I know you do. They want better but football. It just seems, do you know what I mean? It seems a bit uneasy. You and I are talking about someone else getting the sack. It's, I, well, it, it's it not a nice thing. I know, of course, it happens did, in football. Did it happen to Ranieri at Chelsea? Mm. Jose came in, he knew about it, and Jose came yeah. in, and they never looked back. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Newcastle fans, of course, you can have your say on National Radio 0871722334. The breaking news is, of course, that takeover at Newcastle has been completed. Mike Ashley no longer owns the club. Lee Ryder from the Newcastle Chronicle. He'll be joining us next to tell us more about the deal. And Newcastle Colt hero Lee Clark will join us after six. In between then, after them, of course, it's all about you. Newcastle United fans, pick up the phone and get involved. Tell me how you are feeling. Tell me who you want to see in January. 08717 This is Drive on Talk Sport.